another Guinness World Record. And we're going to attempt to visit the most countries in a fixed wing aircraft in 24 hours. <laughs> uh, do you want to explain what your uh, your wee tube's for, Nick, for the uh, purpose of the tape? <laughs> the tube? Yes, the tube is to channel the air conditioning towards the cameras to uh, to keep the cameras nice and cool and stop them cutting out. Well, we might have to actually put it on the uh, instruments at the moment because we've got is it getting quite warm? very hot screens. It's, uh, it's quite warm in here, isn't it? It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> The outside air temperature at uh, 2,000 feet is 27 Celsius Crikey. at the moment. 27? 27, yeah. That'll explain the heat then. We'll explain the heat. That's why we're sweating. It's not through hard work. Can you put your shoes back on? <laughs> <laughs> Our positioning flight to Copenhagen had taken 3 hours and 45 minutes. And by the time we got to our hotel and filed 18 flight plans, there was only time for a couple of hours sleep as we were off to the airport for 2 a.m for our nighttime departure to Sweden. There, despite the early hour, we were met by two enthusiastic pilots, but it was just a seven minute stop on the ground before we were airborne again, heading back towards Denmark, where we stopped briefly on the runway for a photograph. Our weight and balance meant Nick sat in the back for the first legs of our journey, and it's fair to say the airline pilot was enjoying being a passenger for our next leg, the 180 mile trip to Poland. So we have uh, just departed uh, Roskiller again in Denmark. The reason for that is that we had to uh, uh, land back there to count it as a, a country visited. So we've done uh, Denmark and Sweden already now, uh, officially ticked off the list. Uh, Nick's enjoying it so much in the back, he decided to stay there for a, a few minutes longer. Leave me to do all the hard work at the front. But uh, I've got plenty of leg room here. I've got a lovely view. I've got a private pilot flying me around. It's great. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you a fun fact about Denmark then, uh, Nick. Oh, wonderful. Here we uh, go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> apparently, Denmark is one of the happiest countries in the world. Uh, it's probably because they have the highest standards of, of living anywhere in the world. And I can well believe that after our taxi fare. <laughs> <laughs> that taxi driver must be the richest man in the, in the village, I reckon. Another enthusiastic welcome in Poland. A dozen aviators had gathered before 6.30 a.m. A quick coffee, and we were off once again. Hello, tell us where we are. Uh, we are still in Poland. We are coming up on Rockslav, I think it's pronounced. And we are southbound towards the Czech Republic, going to Mikulovic. Mikulovic. And it's still hot. We're up at 5,000 feet, and it's still, uh, what was it, 18 degrees up here. Yeah, it, feels, uh, it does feel warm. Have you got any uh, fascinating facts, Mike, by any chance? I can give you a fascinating fact. Please do. Um, do you know that the Czechs love foraging for mushrooms? I, I do now. Yeah, you did it. Uh, any more than anyone else? They also consume, apparently so, they also consume more beer than anywhere else in the world per capita. That I can believe, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can believe that, definitely. Uh, famous people from uh, Czechoslovakia? Uh, yeah. Ivana Trump, possibly? Uh, yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, tennis stars Martina, uh, Martina Navratilova. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ivan Lendl. Okay, yeah. And of course the composer, you know, Vorjak? Oh. No, it's before my time. Famous composer. Okay. Although he's now a decomposer. He died in 1904. <laughs> and that music, made famous by the Hovis advert, was quite apt as we landed into the Czech Republic. We were greeted by a lady called Vlaster with freshly baked homemade cakes that she'd made just for us. From the Czech Republic, we headed south to Slovakia. Slovakia's capital, Bratislava, is the only capital in the world to border two countries, Austria and Hungary. From Slovakia, it was then a half hour flight to Hungary. And by this time, Nick had actually warmed to my fascinating facts. Have you got any more uh, interesting facts about Hungary? I have, but we haven't got much time left. We haven't got much time, okay. We've only got, no worries. We've only got seven minutes to land. So, okay. Yeah. So, actually. I like the, I, like, I, I believe that Hungary is landlocked. I, I believe. It is, the, like, the it, is, it is uh, landlocked. Do you know what the national sport is though? I, I think it's, I was gonna say rugby or cricket, no. football. No. no, water polo. Get out of here. Yeah, it's true. Okay, fair enough. As our next stop after Hungary was a non-Schengen country, we needed to clear customs before departing for Croatia and the international airport of Rojica. Did you know? Oh, one of my fun facts. Here we go. go on, yeah, yeah. Uh, Croatia has some of the 
the longest sunshine in the world. It actually has more hours of sunshine in a year than Sydney, Australia. I'm surprised by that. Yeah, well, I am. This one, these are fun, surprising facts. They are, very. Uh, 2,715 hours of sun per year. Okay. As uh, I'm led to believe. Croatia also holds a world record like we do. I'm not talking about this one, I'm talking about the one we did before. But the previous one. Uh, the world's smallest town is called Hump. Mm. Um, and it says in my research, it's got a population between 17 and 23. Thousand. No, oh, people. 17 people. Between 17 and 23. People. Do I want to know why, if they counted 2,715 hours of sunshine, why they couldn't be asked to actually count the number of people in the town? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's between 17 and 23. It's, you know, it's not a... If maybe a couple were born and a couple died, but... Uh, yeah, but yeah, you know, okay. when they counted them, surely they could have come up with a, a conclusive figure. Oh, he's gone to work, <laughs> drop, <laughs> drop one off. Maybe uh, a couple of tourists or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. From Croatia, it was a relatively short hop to Slovenia. Sadly, we were unable to try the local Jet A1 shots offered to visiting pilots. We left the seaside airport in Slovenia, tracking the coast for six miles before crossing the Adriatic Sea to a small private airstrip near Venice. And that's where things really started to hot up. Excuse me, just having a, a quick uh, blow. Uh, outside air temperature at the moment on the ground in Italy is uh, 38 Celsius. So as you can imagine, it's uh, baking hot in the uh, aeroplane and uh, we're just trying to keep the uh, cameras and the iPads uh, cool with the, uh, the blower here. In fact, my iPad's been in the cool box for a, a while to, to uh, cool it down. But uh, Nick's just gone to pay a uh, landing fee and this little uh, grass trip not that far from uh, Venice. And uh, I'll tell you where we're off to next in just a moment. Austria was to be our next stop and we departed the grass airstrip and headed up to 11,000 feet across the Alps and into Salzburg Airport at an elevation of 1,400 feet and home to the Red Bull Museum. From Austria, we made an hour's flight across southern Germany, tracking the northern ridge of the Alps. And with good 4G coverage, it allowed us to send some tweets and messages before landing into Switzerland, country number 11, and the previous world record. Then it was a half an hour hop over Lake Constance to Friedrichshafen in Germany, where we were greeted with traditional German efficiency, where a handling agent was waiting in a van to collect our landing fees and give us a speedy turnaround. From Germany, we set off on a one hour, 20 minute early evening flight to one of the world's smallest countries, and Luxembourg. Our prepaid landing fee made for a quick photo stop and five minute turnaround, and we were off flying once again. So we've uh, landed a quick, quick stop at Luxembourg, yeah. which was good, and um, now we're off to uh, Amsterdam. Maastricht. 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 And I've got a treat for you when we get to Maastricht. Yeah? If I say a treat, it's more like a treaty. <laughs> I think we should give the plane a wash. It, so. <laughs> it's, it's filthy. <laughs> it's absolutely filthy. It is. And we did have a treat waiting at Maastricht. We had now visited 14 countries in a light aircraft, more than anyone had ever achieved before. And the PR machine at Maastricht Airport had been working hard to promote the event and our arrival. Not only did we have press and TV waiting, but the airport fire crew gave us a water cannon salute, giving our windscreen a well-needed wash. We spent 10 minutes giving interviews before setting off for Belgium. Another warm welcome awaited us in Belgium with the flying club providing drinks and sandwiches. Nick made a call to Lille Airport to confirm our arrival time into France, only to be told there's no handling agents to deal with us. We spent an hour on the ground trying to find alternatives in France for a night landing. And with no success, we decided to route as planned. And if we couldn't land in France, we'd head directly back to the UK. To our surprise, when we contacted ATC at Lille, they could handle us after all. And we landed at 5 to 11 local time. However, we'd now be too late for Southend Airport and other UK airports were becoming fog bound. 
we decided the bar was a slightly safer option. We'd visited 16 countries in less than 24 hours, and it was, after all, a new world record. <laughs>